U.S. President Donald Trump has been reacting to protests across Venezuela, reiterating his backing for self-proclaimed interim president Juan Guaido. On, Trump, on Twitter overnight, Trump said he'd spoken with Guaido to congratulate him on assuming the presidency and to reinforce U.S. support for Venezuela's fight to regain its democracy. He called fresh protests against incumbent President Nicolas Maduro a fight for freedom. People across Venezuela marched on Wednesday to again demand that Maduro step down. They called on the armed forces to abandon the president and to allow humanitarian aid into the country. They can't take away our right to protest. These Venezuelans in the capital Caracas chant. They are referring to the government of President Nicolas Maduro. Lilian Tintori is one of the protesters. She's the wife of a prominent opposition leader who has been in jail for four years. She told DW it was time for a new government. Stop Maduro as an usurper. The transition to have free and fair election. This is why we are protesting and we wait this. We are working everybody together for this. Tintori and many of these protesters are supporting Juan Guaido, who proclaimed himself interim president last week. The country's chief prosecutor has opened an investigation into his challenge for power. I'm not underestimating the threat of jail, and I don't want it to be understood like that. Very responsibly, I say there is nothing new coming from a regime that doesn't answer to the Venezuelan people's needs. Their only response is repression and persecution. Venezuelan authorities are accusing him of helping foreign countries, such as the U.S., to interfere in internal matters. Washington recognizes Guaido's claim to lead Venezuela. On Wednesday, President Donald Trump phoned him to reiterate his support. For his part, President Maduro tried to convince Americans that intervention would backfire on them. I call upon your conscience. I call upon your solidarity. Be aware of the truth. We must not allow a second Vietnam to happen, this time in Latin America. If the U.S. intervenes, it will be worse for them than Vietnam. According to a Russian news agency, Maduro has offered to negotiate with the opposition in an attempt to regain support domestically. But talks are not what these protesters want. Our people, all the people in Venezuela support Juan Guaido. Listen, Guaido, 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 Their demand is clear. Maduro must go. Well, for more on the crisis in Venezuela, I'm joined now by Dr. Peter Birle, a political scientist and Latin American analyst from the Ibero-American Institute here in Berlin. Thanks for being with us this morning, Professor. Now, the crisis in Venezuela seems to be coming to a head. There's been a mass exodus from the, uh, from the country. The economy is on its knees, and, and dozens of countries uh, are, now are no longer recognizing Maduro as president. How long can Nicolas Maduro hold on? Quite a lot of time, as long as he doesn't lose <clears throat> the support of the country's army, uh, <clears throat> and if he doesn't lose the support of China and Russia, and most important, perhaps, uh, if he doesn't lose support of his uh, Chavista basis in the <clears throat> uh, country's population. So this will be uh, one of the biggest questions of the next days, uh, if the opposition really is able to organize new mass protests. Uh, and so this might, uh, at one point, uh, bring Maduro to step down. The world's attention is now fixed on Juan Guaido, the opposition figure who heads Venezuela's uh, National Assembly and says he is now the country's legitimate president. Uh, the U.S. and nearly 50 other countries have now recognized Guaido as the legitimate uh, president. Is Guaido capable of pushing Maduro out? Uh, not alone, So, because he has no real power. The whole state effort is in, in the hands of the regime. So uh, he only can uh, <clears throat> trust in the support of the people. He can, of course, trust also in uh, international support for what he is trying to do. But he alone, without the help of the army, uh, will not be able to uh, do what he's what he wants to do. 
I want to talk a little about uh, Juan Guaido for a moment because uh, there is so much attention on him right now. A lot is riding on him. What, can, what kind of leader is he and what could we expect from him if he were to take control of the country? He's a young man. He uh, comes from a um, rather modest family background. His father's a taxi driver. And so he's not part of the traditional oligarchy. He uh, is uh, quite clever in using the social media. He is acting in a calm way. So I think he's doing what he really can do. Uh, what can we expect? Well, he has announced that the uh, most important thing would be, well, first, that Maduro has to step down, then to organize a transitional government, to organize a uh, <coughs> situation that allows humanitarian help for the people because they are suffering, and then uh, uh, create the conditions for uh, free and fair elections, then, of course, uh, organize this, uh, these, or these elections. Now, let's talk about the U.S., too, because they're playing a role in all of this. We're hearing Donald Trump uh, talking a lot about what's going on in Venezuela. The U.S. is bringing all the power it has to bear in this crisis, short of military intervention. Uh, briefly, if you can, what are the US, what are U.S. interests in Venezuela? Uh, that's that's true. The United States has been stepping in uh, quite strongly in the last few days. That's also one of the risks for Maduro because he must not uh, seem to be a puppet of the Trump administration. That would mean that he Guaido, would lose. Guaido, you mean? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Guaido, yeah. uh, of course, yeah. yes, uh, because uh, then he would lose the support of the Venezuelan people. So what are the United States' interests? Uh, of course, uh, the United States is interested in uh, a stable and non-socialist uh, Venezuela, and then uh, there are the oil interests. Uh, Venezuela is a market uh, for exports, for imports, and so basically this uh, would be it. Okay. Professor, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Peter Berle from the Ibero-American Institute here in Berlin. Thanks for talking with us this morning on DW News. Pleasure.